This is now step 10 of the project process. Uh, step 10 is called baselining. Now this area is a very important area for project management in general. So what baseline really means is agreement. So you're agreeing now to everything that's been set up during the planning stages before the project goes live. So at step 10, we now need to make sure we set a baseline just before the project goes live. So everyone who's been involved in the project, all the stakeholders and all the people who put the resources together, these people now have to agree that the project is set up to its best possible way of working. Now, what are we agreeing to? We're agreeing to everything. So when we look at resources in project, everything that's been assigned to a task, that's all been agreed. The dates, the start date, that's been agreed. The duration, all that's been agreed. So the stakeholders now who've put everything together and planned the project, as well as others within the project, this is what they're agreeing to. They're agreeing to everything just before the project goes live. Now let's see what other things we're agreeing to, because it's not only the duration and dates. If we look at, for example, the cost table. So view, tables, cost. Whatever costs are in project, we're now agreeing to the costs of the project. Now if I just drag the cost table out a little bit, You'll see at present there is a variance. Now, there shouldn't be a variance until a baseline's been set, but the variance that's showing now is just for the variance from the start of the project. So when people started inputting information, it gives a variance from that very time. So it tells you the extra money from the start of the typing of the project. So this will disappear very shortly when we set a baseline in the cost table. So I'm just going to pull that column a little bit uh, across just to hide it again. So I'm going to change back to our default table, which is the entry table. Now, when we're setting a baseline, we need to know what areas in effect affect the baseline. So there's a table that tells you whether a baseline's been set. And the easiest one to tell you that is actually what's called the variance table. So on the view tab, if I change tables and go to variance, you'll see NA for baseline start, NA for baseline finish. Now that means no baseline has been set. So if you ever see NA, that means no baseline set for the project. So what dates would we expect to go into the baseline start and baseline finish? Well, all that's going to happen is we're agreeing to the start dates, we're agreeing to the finish dates. They're just going to copy themselves across to the baseline start and baseline finish. That's all that's going to happen here. All the costs in the cost table, that's also what we're agreeing to. So everything now we're about to agree to. When we set the baseline, everything in then is ready for any changes to the project. So I'm just going to change tables again just to get used to changing tables. Back to my arrow, entry. Now entry is the default table. To set a baseline, we then use the project tab. Under the schedule section of the ribbon, you'll see an icon called set baseline. Click the arrow, choose set baseline. Now within the box, for set baseline, all we're going to do at this stage is use entire project. There are other options as the course develops itself. So when I've completed the 10 steps, there are other areas that I'll be going into within this set baseline box. But for this point, within the 10 steps, we're going to leave all the default settings. So we're leaving it on entire project for baseline. Click OK. Now, nothing seems to happen at present until you start looking into some other tables. So if I now go back to my variance table, view tab, tables, variance, I can now see the baseline has been set. So when the project starts now and goes live, if anything were to change, I'd now have a date variance from the baseline. So the dates could either come backwards or go forwards according to whatever happens within the project. So that's one of the big reasons of setting the baseline. You've then got clear coverage of what's happening within your project. 
Now let's look at the cost table. Let's put up in the cost. So I'm going to add some columns. Come back to my cost table. Now the cost table, the baseline's been set. And there's the baseline. It's been set against the total cost. If I now look at my variance, there is no variance. So whenever the project is now updated and extra costs are put into the project, there will then be a variance from the baseline. So when you've set a baseline, it's going to give you a clear picture of what happened and changed within your project. It's a very, very useful tool within Microsoft Project. Now, one of the guidances I'd also give you when you've set a baseline is to turn on the baseline graphic. Before I do that, I'm just going to change my tables back to the default settings. So I'm going to change it back to entry table. Now, to set the baseline graphic and display the baseline graphic, that's under the Format tab. So Format tab. Then you'll see an icon called Baseline. Click the little arrow. And then you'll see Baseline Last Saved. If I click that now, now you can see a little gray bar has positioned itself below the blue bar within the chart area of Gantt chart. Now the gray bar displays the baseline. So if anything were to change, the blue bar would either move forward or backwards, but the gray bar will always show you where you should have been. So that's the beauty of setting a baseline. It really does give you a picture of your project at the start before any changes were made. That now concludes step 10 of the project process. I will be going through extra skills in different videos, explaining skills in more depth, but this completes the 10 steps of a project and creating a project from scratch.